Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we're in the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, we resume our study in verse number 8. So if you can, get your Bible, as always, open it up to Galatians chapter 5, and we will begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Study all of God's Word with me for complete series going verse by verse covering all 31,000 plus verses in our English King James Version. Um, all there for you four times straight through going back over 36 years at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Go there, choose, click, and listen. Study God's Word at your pace, at your convenience. Again, that's at the Bible verse by verse dot com and father we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth your word is truth in jesus name amen okay let's begin reading <clears throat> in uh, verse 7 remember the galatian christians are buying into a false gospel false teaching by some judaizers they are called people who wanted to mix Christianity and the Old Testament religion. They showed up after Paul left, after starting this church, and they're handing them a pack of lies, and the Galatians are buying into it. <clears throat> so that's the reason for this letter to the Galatians. And he says in verse 7, You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion comes not of him that calls you. In other words, these things that you're being taught are not from God. <clears throat> so evidently those false teachers were saying, hey, I got a message from God. Got a message from God. And here it is. You need Jesus plus you need to keep the Old Testament law. You got to follow the Old Testament religion too. And Paul says that message is not from God. And in fact, any message that adds anything to the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, where he died and shed his blood for our redemption and paid for our sins, is not of God. Verse 9. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Now, some people may claim that what they were doing was not bad. And they were just adding some works to the plan of salvation. What harm can that do? <clears throat> well, the Bible says, first of all, God says, <clears throat> do not add to my words and do not take away from my words. And by the way, one is just as wrong as the other. A lot of people think it's terrible when people leave out parts of Scripture, and it is. But they think nothing. Fundamentalists are very good at this, of which I consider myself to be one, but I consider myself to be a biblical fundamentalist, not a biblical fundamentalist plus a human tradition, Baptist tradition fundamentalist. No, because it's just as wrong to add something to the Word of God, rules, regulations, traditions, and put them on par with Scripture, as they often are in those settings. That's just as wrong as taking something away from the Word of God. So God says, don't add to my words, don't take away from my words. One is just as wrong as the other. And Paul is saying that if you add something to the Word of God, it's like adding a little leaven to the Holy Scriptures, and it's going to spread to the whole thing, like yeast does in a batch of dough. If you add some spiritual leaven, like works, you add that to salvation, Old Testament law to salvation, add that to salvation through Jesus Christ, it ruins the whole works. It's all bad. It's all useless. Like he said earlier, Christ has become of no effect to you. You add works 
to the plan of salvation, something beyond and what Jesus did on the cross, and you have destroyed the whole works. 10. <clears throat> I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will not be otherwise minded, but he that troubles you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Paul says, I thank the Holy Spirit through the word of God for what he is doing. And I thank the Holy Spirit through the ministry of God's word, which he wrote, is going to pull you out of here. He's going to pull you out of this mess. The Holy Spirit, by using the word of God, is going to pull you out of this mess, Galatian Christians. And you get back on track. Paul was confident. This man who is teaching you this nonsense, this false teacher who is teaching you this nonsense, this guy, he may think he's in good shape. He may even think that he's superior to others, but he is in big trouble and he's going to be judged by God <clears throat> because he is adding to the word of God and souls are at stake. I'm not going to mess with the word of God. To the best of my ability, I'm not going to add anything to it or take away anything from it, and I never have in 36 years, to the best of my ability and to the best of my knowledge. I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but I'm not that stupid to do something like that. 11. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. In other words, Paul says, I'm not preaching circumcision for salvation or any other part of the Old Testament religious system. I'm not preaching any of that for salvation in addition to Jesus Christ. And again, remember, circumcision represents the entire law system, the entire Old Testament system. Paul was getting into trouble with his fellow Jews because he was saying that you did not need to be circumcised and keep the Old Testament law to be saved. Well, when Paul became a Christian, he started preaching, Jesus is it. Repent, receive Christ as Lord and Savior, trust in the finished walk, work with, of Christ on the cross, and you're in good shape. You don't need to add anything to that. <clears throat> well, Paul was getting in all sorts of trouble with his Jewish friends who were outraged at the fact that he was preaching that you don't have to keep the Old Testament law. So the Apostle Paul, he was getting a tar beat out of him. Literally. Well, not tar. But he's getting beat up, literally. Stoned. Thrown in jail. All sorts of persecution. Many times, the Jews tried to kill the Apostle Paul. And all because he was preaching that Jesus alone was sufficient for salvation, that he did it all on the cross. And so Paul says, obviously, I'm not preaching circumcision because if I was, then all those Jews would be loving me, not beating me up every chance they got or trying to kill me every chance that they got. And that's what he means when he says, then the off, if I preach circumcision or the Old Testament law, then the offense of the cross has ceased meaning that the message of the cross is offensive if you take it the wrong way. If you're a sinner who is full of pride, then the message of the cross is offensive. I'm that bad that the Son of God had to come and die for me? That's the only hope that I had? The message of the cross is offensive if you're a sinner and you take it that way. But if you're a sinner who is humble then the message of the cross, that's not offensive to you. Instead, it is a welcome message, and it's a source of great joy. The message of the cross is that the Son of God became a man, died on that cross to pay for your sins, and that mankind is so sinful and so depraved that we can't possibly do anything to save ourselves or to help ourselves get saved or to contribute to our salvation in any way. Our only hope is for the Son of God to become a man, live a sinless life, die on the cross to pay for our sins, 
So God had to pay for our sins. That's the message of the cross. And that is very offensive to a prideful sinner. I'm not that bad. Oh, yes, you are. We all are. Twelve, I would. They were even cut off who trouble you. Paul says, I wish God would just get rid of those false teachers because they're giving you a hard time and they're leading you astray. And who knows how many souls are going to burn in hell because of what they teach. I wish God would just get rid of them. Thirteen. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Paul says you have been called to liberty or unto freedom in Christ. And you are not saved by keeping the law. That's what he means. You've been called unto liberty in Christ. You're not saved by trying to keep the burdensome, impossible for us to keep, law. Now, that doesn't mean that you should break the law. That's what Paul is saying here. Just because you've been called unto liberty and freedom in Christ, that doesn't mean that you got a license to sin. The law is irrelevant for earning salvation. And faith in Jesus Christ is the only thing that counts. But that does not mean that you should not keep the law. God did not give you liberty through Jesus Christ from the burdensome task of trying to keep the law so that you would go out and sin like crazy. That wasn't his purpose. If you think that way and you are trying your very best to take advantage of that, oh, hey, I've been called to liberty. I'm not under bondage. Let's let her snap. Let's do anything we want. After all, we're not under law. If that's how you think, I got news for you. You're not saved. Because a real Christian, a saved Christian, who has the Holy Spirit in them, does not think in those terms. Period. End of story. You're not saved. If you think that way, you are hell bound. Spirit of God is not in you because you would not think that way if you were really saved and therefore and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. God has given you liberty from the law, absolutely, so that you can serve him out of love. You're not saved by trying to be good enough, by trying to keep the Old Testament religion and trying to keep the Old Testament. You're not saved by that. You're saved by your faith in Jesus Christ. You have liberty in Christ. Now you are free by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you to serve Jesus out of love. Not to try to be saved, because you are already, but out of love. See? You have liberty not to sin. You have liberty to not sin. Because Jesus Christ, through his Spirit, lives inside of you if you're a Christian, and he will give you the power, second by second, to live for him. 14. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep this commandment, commandment you're not going to break any other commandment. It's all wrapped up in this one commandment. If you could throw the Ten Commandments into a pot of water and boil it, this is what it would boil down to. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're going to always seek out their best interest. And if you are doing that, then you're not going to sin. You're not going to break in the other commandments of God. None of them. God has simplified it. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Walk in the Spirit, walk in love, and you'll be in fellowship with Him, and you'll be doing the will of God, and you'll be pleasing Him who has saved you by His grace. 15. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. In other words, don't be fighting against each other. And get rid of those heretics who are teaching false doctrine. See, when he says, don't be fighting with each other, he doesn't mean, well, 
just accept anything that comes down the pike as far as teaching goes, even if it's blatantly opposed to Holy Scripture. That certainly isn't what Paul is teaching. Certainly not the way he's going after these false teachers. Like a rabid dog, which he should, which I should, which any preacher should. So when he says, don't fight among each other, he's not saying, oh, just accept every heretic that comes along. No, because elsewhere the Bible says, measure all things by Scripture. God says it in the Old Testament too. If they don't speak according to this word, they have no light in them. Don't listen to them. And Paul is saying here, get along with everybody, but don't listen to those heretics. Come back to Jesus. Come back to Jesus. Are you going to end up losing your testimony? Come back to Jesus. Live for him. Walk in love. You love each other then. And you'll be pleasing to God. And you won't burn in hell because you'll be trusting in his finished work on the cross. I'm telling you, the best way to do it, the only way to do it, is to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and then walk in the Spirit because when you do that, you're going to love Jesus and you'll end up loving your neighbor as yourself. And when you don't, which you won't always because we all fail, you're going to confess and get right back on track and you'll get along. You'll get along. People don't have a problem getting along with each other if they're both getting along with God. Because then they're walking in humility, they're walking in truth, they're both trying to please legitimately, sincerely, trying to please Jesus Christ. You're trying to please Christ, I'm trying to please Christ. We both love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We may not agree on every little issue, but we'll get along just fine. In spite of our disagreements. So Paul says here, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, just don't devour one another. But it all begins with them trusting Christ. And they got to quit listening to these false teachers who are feeding them a bunch of lies. And we'll stop right there. Study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's word. That'll make you a part of this ministry right away. And I'd appreciate that very much. Also, when you take a break from studying, at the BibleVerseByVerse.com. Go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give us a Lord may lead, because that also will make you a part of this ministry. And until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. Thank you so much for studying God's Word with me. So long, everyone. Amen.